Well, it's taken me a while to put this video together. I wanted to make sure I did it justice because it was such a mountaintop experience. Last summer, I was able to climb Norway's Troll Tunga with uh, two of my boys, and we used the Via Ferrata route. Uh, Troll Tunga is about a 3,000 foot climb uh, to a magnificent rock outcropping that's commonly called the Troll's Tongue. Uh, it's about uh, 2,100 feet above uh, a natural lake, and it's a, a beautiful climb. We did it using the Via Ferrata, which means Iron Path, and that is a series of uh, metal rungs that have been put into the side of the rock face, uh, as, long, as well as cables that you clip in with your harness. You have two leashes to clip you to the cables, and it allows... Uh, the climb up this uh, mountain face uh, with a slightly less, less technical climb, but still an exhilarating experience. So come with us uh, on the climb to the Troll's Tongue on the Via Ferrata. Tomorrow we're heading off to Troll Tunga, which is one of the uh, big popular hikes here outside of Oda. A lot of people come to Oda and use this as base camp for all of the hiking around in this area. Uh, the glaciers and several of the trails. So uh, we're looking forward with excitement to tomorrow. Trolltunga is one of Norway's famous cliff faces. It's located near the town of Oda and there are two ways that you can do the hike. There is a 14 kilometer each way, so about a 28 kilometer round trip path. Now, if you're more adventurous, you can choose to do the guided Via Ferrata path which is what we did. And it has three different steps. It has a six kilometer mountain bike ride, then some scramble up the rocks, and then uh, a climb up the Via Ferrata where you're clipped in to the uh, cables and you're using the iron handholds and footholds to climb up the face of the mountain. And then you complete the last step, which is just a regular hike where you combine with the regular hiking trail to get to the troll's tongue outcropping. And you return via the normal hiking path. First step in the Via Ferrata path is to select your mountain bike and begin the six kilometer uh, ride along the lake. The mountain bikes are, are provided for you and the ride starts off on a, a very smooth paved route. Uh, it's a steep climb, but smooth riding. Um, beautiful views beside the lake. As the biking continues, uh, you do get into more of a gravel path uh, and traverse some uh, waterfalls as well. It is absolutely fantastic. fantastic things about hiking in Norway uh, is the beautiful crystal clear mountain streams. So uh, after we finished our biking, we all uh, stopped and we filled our water bottles with uh, absolutely fresh spring water. This is a camera by a company called Insta360 and you'll see it has wide angle lenses on both sides of the camera. And basically, I had this strapped to my backpack. And so some of the views of the mountain and some of the views of the climbing uh, are from this camera that was capturing it uh, as I was climbing. One of the other tools that I used on the trip was my GPS tracker. Uh, it allows you to capture uh, GPS coordinates throughout your 12-hour hike. You'll see that we started the hike at... Uh, uh, 1.30 a.m. Des Moines time, uh, that was really about uh, 8.30 in the morning in Norway, and uh, we were at actually um, 300 feet below sea level when we started that uh, mountain bike ride. 
Uh, when we got to the end of the mountain bike ride, you'll see here it was about uh, an hour and a half later, and we hadn't changed much altitude. But during those six kilometers, there was a lot of up and down steep climbs. But then we began kind of the scramble up. Uh, and you'll notice uh, fairly quickly, about a half hour in, we'd already climbed uh, 1,600 feet. Climbing to the start of uh, where the Via Ferrata would begin, we stopped for a lunch break with uh, a spectacular view. Well, the big moment had finally come. It was time to strap in and begin our ascent up the Via Ferrata. Now, our guides were excellent on this trip, Angel and Henna. Were, were just perfect and they and talked with us before and they had said is anybody a little afraid of heights okay. and uh, I stuck up my hand <laughs> and so Angel said okay you come first then right next to me so here we are about to start the Via Ferrata Guides were great. Uh, Angel did a great job talking me through, and it was good to even hear uh, my son shout out some encouragement as well. The ice? Yes. Good job, Dad. Okay, we're getting there. No, I just uh, yeah, want to take your breath. Take breath yes. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, we're not in a rush. Just I want to see the surrounding yeah. area. It's like uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It is. So uh, this part it's uh, a little bit more tricky, but it's okay. getting easier. Afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I will be here in uh, help you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's a one tip here. Yeah. Can you see me as well? Yeah. Like it's much easier to reattach <laughs> from here. Yeah. And then start climbing. Okay. Here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. At first, it felt a little clumsy and slow hooking the carabiners for our safety lines to the cable. Um, there was two uh, lines that we had, and you had to make sure that you always had at least one attached to the cable at a time. So when you would get to a um, suspension point in the cable where you had to move your two lines over, it took just a little time to get familiar with that, but it got quicker as the day went on. Yes. Yeah. 
we are at the uh, stopping point after the first section of the Via Ferrata. Uh, because I was kind of scared of heights and then wanted guidance, uh, they sent me up close next to the instructor, so that was great. So we're just waiting for the rest to come. But a uh, beautiful, beautiful place and incredible experience. My boys Tom and Richard were right behind, and we all gathered up at the halfway point, getting ready to continue our climb. Our guides were great at getting us up the mountain and helping us with equipment and approach angles, but they also took some great snaps. And so in this situation, uh, I'm going to pass my guide, Angel, uh, and head out onto the ledge so that uh, he can snap a picture. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, memento of our trip. GPS tracker showed that when we reached the top of the Via Ferrata, at that point uh, we had climbed to an altitude of 3,900 feet above sea level, and we had been on the mountain now for about six hours, about four of those on the Via Ferrata. Yay! Way to go, Tom! From here, we took off our harnesses and we joined up with the mountain hike and uh, we went the rest of the way to the Troll Tunga lookout. get close to the outcropping that is the troll's tongue, you will likely catch up with a bit of a lineup to catch this special picture. But it really was worth it. It wasn't just an Instagram moment, it was an accomplishment to share with my boys that I'll remember for the rest of my life. We were part of a great group on this journey. Uh, the week was uh, put together by G Adventures Travel, and specifically this Troll Tunga climb was with a company called Troll Tunga Active. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, we'd invite you to subscribe to our channel, Forward Journey. It's all about exploring and enjoying life in retirement and continuing that sense of adventure. As you can see, Trolltunga was a little bit much for me. 
but there are other videos coming soon about Norway and Iceland and we have one out where we spent a week on the sailboat so you might look back at our um, page and see that. We did some hiking and, and traveling in Europe this past summer so those are the videos we're putting out now but pretty soon spring's in the air and we will get in our class B camper and head out for some adventures here in North America so stay tuned.